Hello and welcome. Have you ever looked at the AI generated images online and wondered, how did they do that? Or, I wish I could do that. I will take your silence as a yes. One way to generate beautiful photorealistic images is with Stable Diffusion. Stable Diffusion is a free and powerful AI tool that you can run on your own PC and turn text prompts into high quality images. Naturally, with any software, it takes time to learn it and get good at it. Lucky for you, my friends, I have distilled my learnings into short tutorial videos to help you get started with Stable Diffusion and get good quickly. So you don't need to waste time sifting through dozens of videos online or read through lengthy GitHub articles like I did. Over the next few episodes, I am going to show you a process by which you can generate beautiful, photorealistic images with Stable Diffusion, and hopefully turn this into this. So, without further delay, strap yourselves in, grab your mouse and keyboard, and let's dive in. Today we are going to cover installation on Windows with a NVIDIA graphics card. If you are running a Radeon card, there is a different procedure, which we are not covering today. I will put a link in the description so you can read through the procedure. But just a word of friendly advice, doing image generation with Radeon cards is very slow because it is not optimized. So if you want to use Stable Diffusion and Automatic 1111, I recommend you use an NVIDIA card. Now here are the basic requirements. You need to have a NVIDIA graphics card that has at least 4 GBs of VRAM. It is better if you have 8 GBs or more. I'm running a 8 GB 3060 Ti right now. It's not the fastest, but it gets the job done. Obviously, if you have a more powerful card with more VRAM, your image generation is going to be faster. You can install Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 with four easy steps. Here is the TLDR. A step 1, install Python. Step 2, install Git. 3, clone the GitHub repository. And finally, download a checkpoint of your choice and then run the web UI user.bat file to begin the installation. Okay, now let's go through each of these steps in more detail. First, we are going to download the installers for both Python and Git. I will leave links in the video description so you can go to each website directly or you can follow along to the following directions. Go to the Automatic 11.11 GitHub page and scroll down until you see automatic installation on Windows. Click on the link for Python 3.10.6. It will take you to the official Python website. Scroll down to Files and click on the Windows installer for 64-bit systems. Now go back to your previous browser tab and click on the link for Git. This will take you to the Git download page. Click on Click Here to Download. When the installer download is finished, go to your Downloads folder and double-click on the Python installer to begin installing Python. This next step is very important. Make sure you do this step to avoid any issues with Python. In this next window, click on the Add Python 3.10 to Path checkbox before you click on Install Now. Wait for the installation to finish. You will see this screen when the installation is complete. I like to click on Disable Path Length Limit to avoid issues with Windows limiting file paths to a max of 260 characters. Windows will ask you whether you want to do this. Just click yes. Once that's done, close this window and we can move on to installing Git. Double click the Git installer and the Git setup window will pop up. Click on next. I'm okay with installing it in my C drive program files, so let's click next. No need to change anything here. Click next, then click next again. Here it is asking you which editor would you like to use? I would recommend using Notepad++ since it is simple, lightweight, and easy to use. You will see later in the video why we need to use this. If you need to download Notepad++, you can use the link in my video descriptions or just search on Google for Notepad++ Download. It will bring you to this page and you can download the latest version. Click this big green download button and it should complete the download pretty quickly. Then you will need to install it. 
I won't show the installation here since I already have it installed, but the process is pretty simple. You open the installer that you just downloaded, click on the next button a few times and the program will be installed. Now come back to the Git Installer window and click Next. Here choose Let Git Decide and click Next. Here stay with the default recommended option and click Next. Here stay with the default Use Bundled Open SSH option. Here go with the default option again. Here I went with the Use Windows default console option. On the next page, keep the default option and click Next. Then again, keep the default option and click Next. Stay with Enable File System Caching and click Next. Then on this final screen, no need to click on any of the two options and click Install. Once installation is finished, you can close this window. Go back to the automatic 11.11 GitHub page and copy this line of command. Now we are going to make a folder for stable diffusion and run the command we just copied to clone the GitHub repository into our folder. As you can see, I have created a folder called AI on my D drive. I would recommend creating your folder in a drive where you have a lot of free space because you are going to generate a lot of images which takes up a lot of space, and you will be downloading models or checkpoints uh, that are very large files. So it will help if you put stable diffusion on a drive that is not your C drive, which also has lots of free space. Create a new folder by right-clicking and selecting New, then Folder. You can name this folder whatever you want. I am going with SD to keep the name short. Double click into your new SD folder, then click on the top navigation bar, type CMD, and press enter on your keyboard. This will bring up a Windows command line that is on your current file path. Do a control V and paste the line of command we copied into this window, then press the enter key. This will copy all of the files on the GitHub repository into our SD folder. When this is done, you will see a new folder here called Stable Diffusion Web UI. Double click into this folder and you can see this is an exact copy of the GitHub page. Before we can start the installation for Automatic 11.11, we will need to download a model or checkpoint. There are many different models available for Stable Diffusion, both official or base models and community created models that are built by fine tuning the base models or merging different models together. The different versions of the official models are version 1.4, 1.5, 2.0, and 2.1. I won't go into a lot of details about what's different between the version 2 models and the version 1 models, but at a high level, the version 1 models uses OpenAI's CLIP model, which can predict the most relevant text description given an image. And the CLIP model was trained on a non-open source dataset of images, while the Stable Diffusion version 2 models uses the OpenClip model instead, and the OpenClip model was trained using a very different image dataset, so that led to version 2 models providing very different results than the version 1 models. Mm -hmm. People in general believe version 2 models looked worse than version 1 models, so there are a lot of community-created models that are based on the version 1.5 model, but were fine-tuned to provide better results. So the best place to download a model or checkpoint is Civit AI. Civit AI is a website where Stable Diffusion community members can upload their fine-tuned or merge models for everyone to download and try. As you can see, there is a huge selection of different models that you can download. But to keep things simple for now, let's go with a popular model called Magic Mix Realistic. We can see this model is a variation of the version 1.5 base model and we are going to download version 5 of this model, which was the latest version when I was making this video. But I think there is a version 6 that was uploaded. It doesn't matter too much which version you want to download. Just know that even different versions of the same model will provide different results. Now click on the download button at the top. As you can see, this file is 2 point something gigabytes, so it is not a small file. Other models or checkpoints will be around the same file size, which is why earlier in the video I said you will need a lot of free hard drive space. I've already downloaded this model before, so I will just cancel this. 
Once your download is complete, go to the download folder where it is saved. We can see that the model file has a .safe tensors file extension. This is the most common file extension that you will see for these models. We want to copy this model file into our Stable Diffusion Web UI folder. Go to the model subfolder, then Stable Diffusion subfolder, and copy your model in here. Uh, I forgot to do it here, but you should delete the copy that is in your downloads folder to save some space. Later on, when you download additional models or checkpoints, you would do the same thing and copy the model file into this folder. Now, we are ready to install Automatic 11.11. Go back a couple of levels to your Stable Diffusion Web UI folder, scroll down to find the webuiuser.bat file, and double-click on it to run it. Fair warning! This is a lengthy installation process. Even if you have a high-end computer, this could still take 40 to 50 minutes to complete. Make sure your internet connection is stable and make sure your computer won't auto turn off. And I would suggest to leave this command window alone and step away to go do something else and come back later. For the video, I am going to fast forward to the end of the installation. Two hours later. Okay, the installation is complete. You will know it is complete when you see this line that provides a local URL. Let's copy this URL and paste it into our browser. I am using Mozilla Firefox, but you can use the browser that you normally use. And here is the web UI for stable diffusion. You might have a white screen that is different than mine, but this is because I have my browser set to run in dark theme. I will show you how to switch the theme later. I find it helpful to use dark theme since it's easier on my eyes. Here we see that our model or checkpoint has been loaded, and we see the basic layout for the web UI with all the different tabs here. In the next few episodes, I will go through and explain how these tabs and different features work. So stay tuned for more helpful information. Before we start generating images, we want to add something to make the generation a lot faster. Go back to your Stable Diffusion Web UI folder, scroll down to find the webuiuser.bat file, right-click on it, and select Edit with Notepad++. This will open up the webuiuser.bat file. We want to add dash dash x formers to the command line arguments and save the file. Then you can double click on the user.bat file to run Stable Diffusion again. This time, Stable Diffusion will start by installing XFormers first. We can see here it says launching web UI with arguments XFormers. When you see the local URL, go ahead and copy and paste it into your browser again. Now we are ready to generate some images. For our first test image generation, I recommend to start with an image on the Civit AI model page, copy over the prompts and parameters that are provided as an example, and try to generate something similar. Here is the Magic Mix Realistic model page. This first image of a beautiful young woman looks good, so let's start with that. Click on the image and you will see on the right hand side there are some generation data associated with this image. Now I'm going to copy the prompts and negative prompts verbatim into our web UI. And we can see here are the other parameters that were used to generate this image. I am going to make a mental note of these and set these in our web UI. I'm also going to copy the seed value. Coming back to this tab, the sampling method is set to Euler. The steps are set to 30, 
we will set the height to 768 pixels because this is a portrait and 512 by 768 is a 2 to 3 aspect ratio, which is fine for portraits. Then paste the seed value that we just copied, then click on generate. You are not going to be able to replicate the same image exactly, but it will be something close. I'm running this on my very old laptop, which has a 4 GB NVIDIA graphics card, so it is taking a couple of minutes to generate this one image. If I was generating this on my PC with the 8GB 3060Ti, it would only take a few seconds. It is even faster if you have a better NVIDIA card, but I wanted to show you that it is still doable on a 4GB card. Okay, so this is done. We can see that it generated a photorealistic image of a young woman with similar features to the example image, but quite a few things are different, such as her pose, the clothing, and the background. This is okay for now, but we will dive more into the why in a different episode. Coming back to the seed value. We used a fixed seed before, but we could also use a random seed value to generate a different image. Clicking on the dice button will set the seed to minus one, which is using a random seed. Clicking on the green recycle button will reuse the last seed value that was used. But for now, let's generate another image with a random seed. Let me show you another thing while this image is generating. While well, you have an overall ETA bar here, but if you go to the command or terminal window, you will see another progress bar. This progress bar is useful when generating more than one image at a time, and this will show you the current image generating step that it is on for each image. So it is a more granular view of the image generation progress. Okay, let's take a look at the new image. That is pretty good. All images that are generated are automatically saved. Now let me show you where to find your saved images. Go to your Stable Diffusion folder, then click on the Output subfolder. Since we were generating images using the Text to Image tab, the output images will be saved here. And the images are automatically organized by date. And here we can see the two test images that we just generated. All right, there you have it. We have just installed Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 and generated some great looking images. Tune into the next episode where I will show you my workflow on how to quickly start working with a new model or checkpoint. That's it for now. If you liked this video or find it helpful, please click like, leave a comment, and subscribe to this channel to support it. It would help me out a lot. Thank you and I will see you in the next video.